Hi, it's Jimmy, and today I'm going to teach you how to sync your Todoist tasks with Google Calendar. Todoist is a great task management application, but what if you want to get those tasks and have them sync to your favorite calendar app? In this case, I'm going to use Google Calendar, as that's what most people use. So let's get started. So as you can see here, I have a task in Todoist, recording this video, and what I want to do is I want to set up Todoist so that I will sync my tasks, or certain tasks, or certain projects at least, with Google Calendar. So the first thing you need to do is you come up here to where your so your avatar is, this is where your settings are. You click on that and you come down to integrations. Click that. And then under here you'll see a Google Calendar section in the integrations. Make sure the integration section is highlighted here on the left hand side. And then over here you'll see Google Calendar and it'll give you an option to connect your calendar. So I'm gonna hit connect calendar. That should bring up my Google options here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my Productive Engineer one. It's going to give me my permissions to make sure it's going to you know, be clear, understand that this is going to be able to edit, share, and delete calendar entries inside your Google Calendar. I'm going to hit Allow. You get another message here that tells you that Google Calendar will have the ability to see certain information inside of Todoist. You say Agree. And then you're going to get this little screen right here which looks a little weird because I'm in dark mode. But, so now you can have a couple different things here. You can use some of your existing calendars. My primary calendar, I have a test calendar inside of Google Calendar, and I also can create a new calendar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new calendar called Todoist. And I'm going to sync all my projects. But what I could do here is I can actually choose a specific project if I wanted to, and then come down here and select which one of my projects I want. Uh, so in this case, you know, I'll just use Inbox. I'll choose a specific project. I can choose all of them, assuming that they are, have already been synced, or a specific one. I'm going to just choose everything in my Inbox for now, just to keep it simple. And then you can have a label. So the nice thing about this is labels in Todoist are tasks. Let me try that again. Labels inside of Todoist are tags with a G, not tasks. And what they allow you to do is the pieces of metadata that allow you to sort based upon that piece of metadata. In this case, GCal would be, might be one here. You might put GCalendar, Google, whatever you want to put in as the label. GCal is fine for me. I don't use that, so that's okay. The default duration for ta for new to those tasks inside of Google is 60 minutes. So this is one of those scenarios where if you don't set, um, when you set a task typically in Todoist, you're setting it like, I want to do this task at a certain time, but you're not necessarily setting a duration. Whereas calendars typically work on duration. So by default, it's gonna say 60 minutes. You can change it to like 30 minutes. So I'll just change it to 30 minutes for now. Then you have these two other categories here. To do is tasks without a due time. So in other words, if you didn't assign a time to them, because a lot of times to do is you might assign a date, but you might not assign a specific time. So you have a couple of options here. By default, it's going to sync them as though that task takes all day, which most of the time is not what you want. Or you can just do not sync it. So if you're going to use Google Calendar, one of the recommendations I would have is that you set estimated times to completion, right? So if I'm doing a task and I say I want to do this task at 4 o'clock, then I'm going to set it for a half hour, 15 minutes, an hour, whatever it is. So that way, when it goes into my calendar, it's not locking the calendar all day, or conversely, with a situation where I just don't put it into my calendar. Now, if you have tasks that you're gonna do at a specific time, but you don't want them to show up as calendar events in your calendar, then in that case, don't assign it a time and just do not sync it. The other thing you wanna do is, you're, once you complete a task, do you want it to stay in Google Calendar or you want them to be removed? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select it are removed from Google Calendar. Because if I'm doing a task, once I'm done with it, I don't want to see it in my calendar anymore. Now, some people like that because they like to be able to go back into their calendar and be able to see the things they did in that day. But to me, I can do that in Todoist itself. So not necessarily something I need to see. But if you want that, then you'll change this right here back to staying Google, on Google Calendar. And what that'll do is keep that task in the calendar even after you mark it complete. So now I'm going to hit, so I'm going to actually change this back to remove. I think I have everything the way I want it. I'm going to hit connect. It's now connecting. Okay, so now we're connected. Okay, we're back. So one of the things I did while we were offline is I just pulled up my Google Calendar here on the left-hand side. 
on the right hand side over here I still have my to do this window so as you can see if you look closely over here I have a new well I have a new calendar that was just created called Todoist which will take all the tasks from my inbox that I put in my inbox and will populate those in my calendar so one of the things I can do here I have a task here record how to sync with Todoist and if I go to today you can see it's right here it's it, it's listed here on, on the calendar it doesn't have a specific time so what I could do here is I can come in here click on at a time and let's say my current time zone and let's say 10 30 p.m. click add and save and now you can see two things happen you just probably just noticed it on my screen to the left here but I have my time here and it automatically sync because it's bi-directional sync between calendar and to-do list and now you can see over here I actually probably stretch this a little bit well, maybe not. Down here towards the bottom of the day, you can see that this is now at 10.30. Now, if I click and drag this to 2, and there it goes. So it takes a second or two. I got a little impatient. But you can see when I hit the refresh, it refreshed it over here in Todoist. So it's really cool. It's a bi-directional sync. It works well. Next, what we can do is I can add another task in here. And because it's in my inbox, let's make this one edit video for Google Calendar and I can come into schedule and let's make that tomorrow let's learn how to spell calendar and let's make that let's give it a time let's come down here to add a time and let's make that at 11 a.m. I'll do that my time zone hit add save and then you can see that shows 11 a.m. Let's do a quick recycle here. Oh. Uh, helps when you hit when you actually save the tasks. So edit video Google Calendar. Again, let's schedule that for tomorrow. Helps if we assign the time, like I said. Let's do 11 a.m. Add and then save. You have to save and hit add task. And then now that video, that will be there. And then tomorrow, I should see something pop up over here. So if I come over here to 11, now you see I have edit video, Google Calendar, 11 a.m. So that's really cool. And if I come in, like I said, if I come in here, and let's say I change the time, right? I'm gonna edit it, and where's my time? And let's say I, say I wanna make it Let's start the, the far time first. Let's do 1.30 and let's start this at 1 to 1.30. Oops. Let's try this again. Let's do 1 to 1.30. Just a half hour one. We'll save it. And now it should change over here. And there you go. It changed over to 1 o'clock. You should say 1. So notice because there's no duration in to do is. It just shows me at one o'clock. But if I come back over here and I change it, I can actually change it again. Just be a pain in the butt. I can make it 3 p.m. Hit add, hit save, and this should now move from one o'clock to three o'clock. And there it goes. So pretty cool, right? The ability to directionally sync your calendar and your tasks between to do is the Google Calendar. A lot of people use Todoist. A ton of people use Google Calendar. If you're using Google Calendar as your calendar app, there's a couple of recommendations and you want to use Todoist with this. There's two big recommendations I would have. One is try to assign times to your entries. So that way it doesn't come up as all day inside of Google Calendar. And the second is to there's going to be a temptation to use all your projects, and you can certainly do that, right? If you have one calendar, you can put all your projects in it, that's great, you can do that. But if you have a lot of projects with a lot of tasks, and a lot of tasks you may or may not get to, that could quickly, combined with meetings and other things you have, you might not keep in Google, um, in, in Todoist, excuse me, you might end up really sort of butchering your calendar up. So instead, what I would do is pick a couple projects, or pick your inbox, or pick some dedicated project 
that you want to use in a calendar and use it for that calendar. If you have, a, a, you want to have a separate task calendar like I do, just create one of the, you can call it Todoist, call it whatever you want, use that calendar and sync it with your specific projects that you want. You can have multiple calendars in Google Calendar, obviously, that you can cycle through. So you might have like a daytime one, a, like a family calendar that you may share with other people. You may have a, you know, like a side hustle type calendar, calendar that you're using to track certain tasks that are related with that. So really sort of be um, intentional in sort of how you do your calendars, but it is really cool. To, it's really easy, as you saw, it was really simple to set up. And once you get it set up, it really does work well. Well, before I let you go, if you're just getting started with Todoist, check out my Todoist video, my beginner's guide to Todoist specifically. I'm gonna link it up, up top. It is a really good video. It's really in depth. It takes you, assuming that you know nothing about Todoist, and by the end of the video, you should know everything you need to know to get started. So if you watch this video and you feel like, yeah, if I can use a sort of a brush up on Todoist, I recommend you watch it. And if you like this video, I. I would really appreciate it if you liked it, if you hit the like button. <laughs> if you liked it, I would love it if you liked it. But if you can click the like button, it does help out my channel. It really does show YouTube that this video was worth watching and that you got something out of it. So if you get a chance, hit the like button. I'd appreciate it. And thanks for watching.